What's going on guys? Derek here from Wilson Audio Labs. If you've been on Facebook lately, you've most likely seen these new amps from Stereo Integrity's SIQ series. Very nice looking. Thanks to Stereo Integrity for letting me use this clip here. Comes in a wooden box with a plexi cover, real high-end components, just very, very nice looking overall. And a lot of the interest online, some of the other Chinese build houses kind of copy this design and are making it readily available out there in places like Alibaba, places like Facebook. People are just coming up asking, do you want to buy these amps? You can see one piece, $199. If you buy more than 200, it's 130. However, you will have to pay for shipping a container. If you just buy one, it's around $315 or so shipped to the U.S. And here are the ratings, 100 watts per channel at 4 ohms, or 130 watts per channel at 2 ohms, plus or minus 10% tolerance. You can see the other specs there as well. Now I had somebody else post a picture showing an amp very similar to this. It's called the ZM150.4SQ. And he sent me over some specs, 150 watts per channel at 4 ohms, 280 per channel at 2 ohms. I'm like, hmm. I got to get me one of these, so I paid $310, and a couple weeks later, here it is. So let's take it out of the box and check it out a little bit closer. You can see it comes with the mounting feet and the mounting screws, and then pretty much the amplifier by itself in a protective bag. Take the bag off, and here it is, but we have to hear this. All right, and as shown by the pictures, this amp is just beautiful. You can see the four by 150 watts there. You can see the Plexi cover, the ZM150.4SQ or ZM for other countries. Here on the connection side, you can see there are two gain adjustments here, one for channel one, one for channel two. Also Tiffany style RCAs for channel one, channel two. Insert terminals for the speakers. Then there are two 35 amp fuses as well as a power protect light, four gauge for power and ground, remote connection, and you move a little bit further down, you'll see channel three and channel four connections, and also the same as the other side, we have Tiffany style RCAs and individual gain controls for each channel. You may notice it's missing crossovers, but this is an SQ amp. As far as dimensions go, 13.9 inches on the long side, 7.5 inches on the wide and as far as the thickness 1.8 inches or 46 millimeters again this is the money shot this amp is just gorgeous what can you say all right friends i've got the china sq this is the model number is zm 150.4 sq also known as a TM100.4SQ. This is uh, beautifully laid out amplifier that's being mass produced and sold from several different brokers and such in China. But I've just got it hooked up and I'm gonna turn it on just to make sure it doesn't go up in smoke here in front of our face. So let's turn it on. <laughs> I hear some popping, some relays, maybe. All right, we've got two green lights, no smoke. All right, here we have the amp wired up. We have channels one and channels two going into the dyno. And channels three and four going to the big dummy loads. These are four ohm, 1000 watt resistor loads here. So let's fire up the dyno. Try the four channel test first. It's rated 150 watts by four at four ohms. Let's see what it does. Time to test out those power claims here on this Chinese SQ amp. Before we do that, make sure you check the video description for Wilson Audio merch, pick you up a t-shirt, sweatshirt, all that fun stuff. Make sure you leave me a thumbs up too. Greatly appreciated. 
First up, we're gonna do the four channel test. Two channels are tested, all four channels are loaded. According to my ratings, 150 by four, but for the other model, 100 by four. Let's try it certified first up to 1% THD and 87 watts. Thanks, Big D. This is Dick Riculous. D <laughs> ratings way off and clamp meters falling. Check this out. You big dummy. Next up, we'll try the uncertified test. Takes us up to clipping. And as far as the power output, it's exactly the same. 87 watts per channel. 87 watts times four. It's rated 150 by four by the company I bought mine from. Dynamic power does a little bit better. Right around 100 watts per channel. 100 watts times four. Our voltage is a little bit high, a little bit over 14.5 volts. As far as efficiency goes, 60% is what we measured, which is expected. This is a class AB amplifier. Next up, two ohms in the four channel mode, rated 280 by four by my company, 130 by four from the other supplier. And I think the other supplier is gonna be closer. Look at this, 135, 134 certified, 1% 1 THD, one kilohertz. Let's rewire it to dynamic because we found the uncertified tests were pretty much the same as certified. So we didn't wanna waste your time here showing too many different tests. 169 watts per channel. Our voltage again is a little bit high, 14.5. But let's check out that efficiency at two ohms. We measured 64% efficient at two ohms. So not too bad there. Now let's rewire it down to two channels. So we have the four channels bridged to two and you use the left positive and the right negative from the opposite channel. So channel one positive, channel two negative, channel three positive, channel four negative. And then let's try it out here. Certified bridge, four ohms, one kilohertz. Right around 262 watts at 14.44. And again, we'll rewire it for the dynamic burst. And look at this. Obviously it has an unregulated power supply because we're getting more power here, telling us that it's not regulated. 340 watts times two, so pretty good power there. Again, it's not rated this number. Efficiency 52.5%, again, class AB expected. Now let's check out the results. Nowhere near the rated power, at least by the provider I got it from. You can pause this if you'd like to look closely, but basically around 85 watts per channel times four at four ohms, 130 watts times four at two ohms, 260 watts times two bridged at four ohms. Now let's try it to see how it sounds with the bookshelf speakers. Let's try some of Mazer Laser. This is my intro song for most of my videos. find out where the trap is. song I haven't played in a while. This is called the OSS Slow Tempo Beat. I actually made this song on GarageBand several years ago. Let's take a listen.
dyno test as well as the sound quality test, I got out the thermal camera to try and check out the temperature. You can see here the highest I measured was around 105 degrees Fahrenheit. So the amp stayed relatively cool throughout the entire test process. The other thing that's interesting is what appears to be covers for the transformers, the two inside covers don't appear to be covering transformers. I think they're covering something else or maybe nothing. You can see here by the heat pattern, the lighter colors indicate higher temperatures. All right, so I've taken off both of the end plates here and I'm trying to get this plexi panel out, but it is in there super, super tight. So I'm gonna try carefully to use some pliers to pull it out. And I don't know that that's gonna work. <clears throat> you big dummy. Only way I was able to get it out a little bit was to push really hard on this end. I don't know how the freak you're supposed to get that out or maybe you're not. All right, so you can see I've gotten it out a little bit more. I figured out a way to do it using a little bit of persuasion, being very careful with the components. I'm just hitting it like right here. Uh, but yeah, man, that thing is on tight. It doesn't want to come off. As soon as I get it off, I'll be back. There we go. Got it. You can see this thing, or maybe you can't see, but there is a really small groove that fits into the channel here on the amp. So super, super tight tolerance there. Another money shot here. Now these transformer covers are chrome. They look gold in the picture. It's just because of the color of the reflection, but we can see the capacitors here. These say Rubicon 2200 microfarad, 35 volts. And as far as the MOSFETs, these are IRF P zero 64 ends. These are in channel MOSFETs for the power supply. And you can see the ratings here. Their international rectifier is the brand and there's all the good stuff. You can pause that if you want to get geeky and talk about that. Now here is another shot that shows those Chrome covers and also those TO threes. And from what I can see here marked on these transistors, they are on and MJ 15025 and 15024s, which are 250 watt BJTs, which run about $7 a piece at low volume and around $5 a piece if you buy them at high volume. Plenty of specifications here if you want to pause it. 16 amps, 250 watts, all that good stuff. But yeah, they're pretty nice overall. Now we're going to take a closer look at the Stereo Integrity SIQ 75.4 versus the amp that I have. And if you'll notice, there are some distinct differences. Mainly in this section here, you'll see the Stereo Integrity has got the large audio quality capacitors. And we have uh, smaller caps that we're not really sure if they're even real. Now let's talk about the good stuff. It's a beautiful amp. Uses Tiffany style RCAs. Has individual channel gains for each channel. All connections are on one side, and if you're a baller, you can buy 200 of these for $130 each. Just have to get you a container, ship them from China. Good luck. It's going to be a lot more expensive than that. <laughs> what could be better was well, rated like a boss, obviously. Expensive shipping to the USA if you just want to buy one. Doesn't have any crossovers, but it is an SQ amp. We heard some transformer noise. Support? Yeah, right. Never. Not going to get any. It's possible that these parts inside are counterfeit. I'm not sure, but there is a very good possibility. Sound quality was only okay to me. It wasn't, you know, didn't blow me away. But overall, the amp looked pretty nice. But what I would recommend is get a better quality amp like the one from Stereo Integrity. Or check the video description. My buddy Hi-Fi Vega is testing a SQ amp that comes out of China called a Vivaldi. Now this one uses Sankin transistors. Elena caps, very high end. All the capacitors, all the components inside are very high end. So it's worth taking a look at this one. Check out his video coming up soon. So thanks as always for watching my videos. I appreciate your support. Clicking the thumbs up, sharing the video. My Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash old school stereo. And a special thanks to Stuart, Travis, Jesus, Tomcat, Russell, 
Nick, High Five Vega, Big D, I'm out of here. All right, we have the amp bridge. We're going to try a 2.67 ohm mono run, or bridge, I should say, times two channels on the China SQ amp. Let's see if it works. So right at 300 watts per channel, 14.44, that's pretty good. So now it makes me wonder if it'll actually do two ohms bridge. Right about the same 304, 301. 